We are now ending chapter 3 with 3.4, Other Units for Solution Concentrations. So here we're going to define the concentration units of mass percentage, volume percentage, mass volume percentage, parts per million, and parts per billion. And we're going to perform computations relating a solution's concentration and its, and its components, volumes, and or masses using these units. So just to kind of review from last section, we talked about molarity is very useful for evaluating the concentration of solutions, and then we went over dilution, uh, the dilution equation. And in this section, we're going to look at some other units of concentrations that are also very commonly used in different applications. So we're gonna start with mass percentage. And the mass percentage of a solution is the ratio of the component's mass to the overall solution's mass okay, as a percentage. So a lot of times we're more interested in the mass percentage of a solute, um, but you can also figure out the mass percentage of solvent. So the, and you can figure that because the mass of solution is equal to the mass of your solute plus the mass of your solvent. When you put them together, that's how you get a solution. Most of your questions seem to just tell you the actual mass of your, sol of the, of your solution, but just so you're aware, it's actually the mass of your solution is the solvent plus solute. Um, an example of where you might see this, uh, liquid bleach is an aqueous solution of sodium hypochlorite. Um, and this brand here is um, told, you ha it tells you you have a solution of 7.4% sodium hypochlorite by mass. So here's an example. We're told a five gram sample of spinal fluid contains 3.75 milligrams or 0 0.00375 grams of glucose. And we want the percent by mass of glucose in the spinal fluid. So in this case, the spinal fluid is our entire solution. So that goes on bottom. And then our mass of our solute goes on top. In this case, it's glucose, and we need to change it from milligrams to grams. There's one gram per, per 1,000 milligrams, so this is 0 0.00375 grams. And then don't forget to multiply times 100. And you get that it is 0.075%. Another example, concentrated hydrochloric acid is an aqueous solution of 37.2% HCl that is commonly used as a laboratory reagent. In fact, concentrated hydrochloric acid was my very first ever acid burn. <laughs> um, I was in, I think it was analytical chemistry, I was a freshman, third quarter, and I had got, I just got a drop of it and it got under my ring on my ring finger, which then held it in place. But I got it rinsed off, but I actually still have a little tiny bit of uh, discoloration scarring on my finger from it. So be careful with concentrated acids. Wear gloves. Don't be like me. So we're told, given a density of it of 1.19 grams per milliliter, and we want to know the mass of HCl in 0 0.500 liters of this solution. So we're looking at percent by mass, but we're given a volume which then we're given a density. So remember chapter one, we can go from volume to mass using density. So we have 500 milliliters, which is the same as 0 0.500 liters. I'll kind of show you. Liters, 1,000 milliliters per one liter, equals 500 milliliters. So we do that times its density, throw it in milliliters, that gives us grams of solution. And then when we're told this percentage, that means that we have 37.2 grams of HCl for every 100 grams of solution. Just like you would if you had a percentage on an exam or something, that's how we take these percent um, concentrations to use them in a calculation. And then we see grams of solution cancel out. Okay, so that grams of the grams from the density can stand for grams of solution. And then we're left with grams of HCl. So we get that this 500 milliliters of solution should weigh 221 grams. Well, 
HCL in it will weigh 221 grams. So then the next type of concentration is volume percentage. And this is your volume of solute per volume of solution times 100. And similar to before, your volume of solution is your volume of solute plus your volume of solvent. But again, your book pretty much just tells you your total solution volume uh, for uh, your problems. So for example, rubbing alcohol, which is next to impossible to find right now in stores, um, is usually sold as a 70% volume aqueous solution. If the density of isopropyl alcohol is 0 0.785 grams per milliliter, how many grams are present in a 355 milliliter bottle of rubbing alcohol? So we're told 70%, which means that there are 70 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol, called APA, IPA, for 100 milliliters of solution. Okay, so then that goes down here and we're starting with 355 milliliters of solution. So that goes away and that gives us milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. And then we're given the density of it. So if we multiply times the density, we left with grams of isopropyl alcohol and we get 195 grams. The last type of concentration, which we don't even have an example for, is mass volume. And what this is, is grams of solute per 100 milliliters of solvent, or of solution. Okay, um, this is very commonly used actually in medicine. For instance, saline solutions uh, for IV fluids are 0.9% mass per volume of sodium chloride usually. That means there's 0.9 grams of solute per 100 milliliters of solution. Another example actually is our glucose meters. They give you uh, blood glucose in terms of milligrams per deciliter. So this is also a mass volume type of concentration, just not as a percentage. And now we have some units that are pretty close to my heart um, from my days in air quality and water quality, parts per million and parts per billion. So these are very, very low solute concentrations. Um, I mean, tiny amounts, but tiny amounts can make a big difference. Just because something is low in concentration doesn't mean that it's harmless, for instance. So PPM, or parts per million, is mass of solute divided by your mass of solution times 10 to the sixth power. So a tiny, tiny bit of solute. And then PPB is mass of solute to mass of solution times 10 to the ninth, even smaller but very, very um, important types of units. So if you ever read, sometimes um, cities will send out um, pamphlets once a year usually that talk about the city water and the different concentrations of either contaminants or nutrients in it. Um, and a lot of times they say PPM or PPB, and this is what it's talking about. So um, for example, tap water has some trace levels of stuff in it. Um, different contaminants, if it's not filtered, um, that can potentially make it unsafe, but usually tap water is perfectly safe to drink unless you're in places that aren't. Um, for instance, Flint, Michigan is an example. Um, you can get inline water filters to help uh, reduce the solutes that are in your tap water and it can help the taste too. So for instance, um, I have a uh, filter on my tap water in my apartment and it makes a big difference in the taste. I don't know why <laughs> this picture also has some pickles there, but at least they have good taste in pickles. So let's look at an example. According to the EPA, when the concentration of lead in tap water reaches 15 parts per billion, certain remedial actions must be taken. What is this concentration in PPM? And at this concentration, what mass of lead in micrograms would be contained in a typical glass of water? So, PPB, if we recall, equals your mass of your solute divided by your mass of your solvent 
times 10 to the ninth power. And let's solve for our mass of solute because we're actually already told PPB. So our mass of our solute is equal to our parts per billion times our mass of our solvent or solute, sorry, or sol solution, sorry, not solvent, solution. Divided by 10 to the ninth power. Okay, and so now we can start plugging in. This is 15 ppb. Times our mass of solution, remember this is water. So we're gonna assume the density here of this water is one gram per milliliter. So then that means that our mass of water is equal to 300 milliliters times one gram per milliliter. So it's 300 grams. So now we have 15 ppb times 300 grams divided by 10 to the ninth ppb. You can see PPBs cancel and we're left with grams. And we get 4.5 times 10 to the negative sixth grams. That's a tiny number, right? And now we wanna go to micrograms. So 4.5 times 10 to the negative sixth grams. And we look at conversions and there's one microgram per every 10 to the negative sixth grams. And this gives us 4.5 micrograms. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of lead. Big, big, big problem. Oh, <laughs> and here it is again, just written a little nicely, a little nicer from your book. And I believe this closes out chapter three. Make sure you guys do your discussion boards and do your homework and quizzes. And as usual, contact me if there's any problems. I know sometimes Chem Vantage um, messes up. Please contact me if there's issues with it so I can fix your score. But please understand, I do not write the questions. I have no control over errors or what it's being picky about. So please, please, please keep that in mind. Um, I do my best to help you out, but I can only do so much. Okay, with that, you guys stay safe, have a great week, and I will see you online.